So as I begin this video, guys, I first want to say that uh, as a prerequisite, your thinking needs to be, I would rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So I know that lately I've been making a lot of content about the recession possibly coming. And what I want to tell you guys is I don't know if the recession is, is coming. We don't know. The data shows that it is, but then there's plenty of data that debunks that that says it isn't. And so I, I say all of that to say this next video is going to be about how to prepare and what things I would be looking to do to prepare for an upcoming recession. But that by no stretch of the imagination means that I'm guaranteeing you that a recession is coming and we're all doomed and we need to be prepared. Uh, it's just, I would rather be prepared than unprepared. And these are the following things that I'm currently thinking about and doing and advising people to do with an upcoming recession. And so, um, you know, as, as we talk about this, I, I understand that a lot of you guys are in different financial situations. Some of you guys are very well off. Some of you guys are, are maybe struggling right now. And regardless of where you're at, this information is simply meant to be a playbook for how to look at the current market and what you should do upcoming in a recession. Now, the first thing I want to remind you is that the recession of 2020 was only technically two months long. Now, the reason that that's important for you to think about is a lot of people have that in the back of their head from the last recession and what happened in that recession. And the importance of that is the last recession only lasting two months makes people believe that all recessions, especially if it's the first one that they really lived through, it makes people believe that all recessions just happen fast and then they go. And that's not the case. When we think back to 2008, that recession lasted 17 months. And so that leads me to my first tip today on how to, res uh, how to survive a recession. It's the three to six month income sort of savings window or three to six months uh, expenses, excuse me, that everybody lives by as an emergency fund probably needs to be higher in times like this. We need to think about how can we get six to 18 months of our expenses put away right now in case of a recession. Now I get it, that's a lot of money. And you might ask, what's the variable? Like, what would, what, how would one person be 18 months versus how would another person be six months? And the answer is fairly simple. The answer is, how stable is your income? If you're a real estate agent, you need to have 18 months. If you're a salaried employee that already went through the Great Recession and COVID and you know that your job is secure, you probably still only need six months. The goal is not to have to have a bunch of cash because cash sitting in your bank account isn't working for you, but you need to have that safety net. So that's the first thing is you need to increase your safety net in an upcoming recession for preparedness. And, um, and that doesn't have to be in a bank account. It, uh, ideally speaking, that's in something that's a fixed sort of rate of interest. So that is in a CD, a certificate of deposit, go research that, or a treasury bill for uh, a year or two years. That way it's fixed, but ideally in a situation that you can liquidate that if you need it. Treasuries obviously are very liquid. Uh, CDs, certain CDs have penalties and things, so make sure you do your due diligence on that. The second thing is, regarding our income and regarding savings is very simple. If you're coming up on retirement and you are, are getting ready to retire, you need to think about having years of expenses in cash, in CDs, in treasuries. And the reason that is, guys, is that you don't wanna just say, oh, I'm gonna retire, let me sell my stock portfolio. That's not gonna do anything for you. You wanna keep your nest egg growing over time. We talked about that in a previous video where we talked about no risk stocks, no downside, and if the market goes up, you make money. It's the perfect situation. It's called a buffer ETF. We talked about it on the channel just last week. But what's important is, if you're going into retirement, you have enough capital and cash for years, because you're not gonna have any income, for years. This is a side of people that have pensions and all that fancy stuff, but people that don't have any sort of residual income, you have no rental properties, no dividend portfolio, no pension, you need to have years of income put away, maybe five years, three years of income put away. That way you don't have to go touch your stock portfolio should the stock market correct 20, 30, 40, 50%. The last thing you wanna do in that moment is sell that portfolio that you just worked the last 15 years to grow to where it is today and then sell all those gains. So that's number two. If you're getting close to retirement, you got to, got to, got to get some years of expenses put away. Number three, this goes for everybody. We need to get rid of our debt. There's a lot of people right now asking me the question, if there's a recession, Patrick, where would you invest? 
I would invest in getting rid of my debt if I had any. I'm very fortunate that the only debt I have is my mortgage. It's 2.65% or 2.6, yeah, 2.7%, excuse me. And it's, it's under 2,000 a month when we're talking about just principal and interest. When we include taxes and insurance, we're about $2,500 a month. I'm never gonna pay that off, why? Because I can invest my money literally in treasuries right now at 4%. Why would I invest my money uh, into paying that debt off? So when I'm talking about high interest debt, I'm not talking about a specific percentage, I'm talking about can I invest at a higher rate? And so if I have a credit card, right now the credit cards are around 21% interest. If I have $5,000 of credit card debt and I have 5,000 in the bank and I'm thinking, oh, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an investor, I'm going to go and invest that five grand versus pay down, the odds of you getting a 21% return in the next year are extremely low. And so I would pay that debt off as my investment strategy versus go and invest. This is for all of you. A lot of people right now want to get investing and they have debt. If you have debt, if you have interest debt, if you have high car loan debt, RV debt, side-by-side debt, boat debt, uh, if you have a high, I mean, you might have a 10% debt on your house. If you have student loan debt, if you have personal debt, business, if you have debt that is high, exceeding four or 5%, you need to pay that down. That is your investment strategy. You don't go invest. You pay that debt down. That is without a question, the most difficult part. And you might say, well, why is that? Well, imagine this for a second. Imagine you own a car. Heck, maybe you own a Lamborghini like me. I'll give you this example. Imagine if I had debt on this. And imagine if this thing was worth 240 when I bought it two years ago, and now it's probably worth 175, 180, 160, I don't know. If I have debt and I didn't have a down payment on it, or if I didn't have a bunch of equity in it, I might actually owe money to sell it because I'm gonna get less than what uh, I owe the bank. That's how people go under. It's by having a boat, an RV, a car, you name it, and their debt is a larger sum than the car is worth, than the boat is worth, than the RV is worth. That's an issue. That's why we get rid of our debt. And that way we can actually control our finances. Now number four is more of a mindset thing. It's recognizing that in every single recession in history, we've created some of the greatest opportunities. You have to recognize that. The reason why we want to get rid of our debt, the reason why we want to have a good emergency fund is so that any extra cash that we have, we can be as aggressive as possible if and when the market corrects. See, a lot of people right now, what they do is they think that uh, their emergency fund is their investment account. It's not. They think that their, um, their, their CDs or their treasuries... That's not your investment cash. That's emergency cash. That's put away. That's cash. You then have to have another Foxy Pocket put aside, ready to go if the market turns down. And COVID in 2020, oil was where I made a great deal of money. As you guys remember, uh, barrels of oil went negative, and uh, it was just something that clicked in my mind. Man, this isn't going to last forever. I'm going to invest. And so what did I do? I invested in the oil market. And it, it, I mean, within a year, as you guys remember, that thing spurred right up and it made great deals of money. My miss was, was Bitcoin. I didn't buy Bitcoin. I bought Bitcoin in November of 2022 on that dip. I didn't buy it in COVID when it was, you know, five grand a coin. If I had, that we, we'd probably have a different conversation. And so in doing that, though, in order to take advantage of Bitcoin in November 2022, which wasn't a recession, but it was a downturn, in order to take advantage of oil, in order to buy the property I bought, what was I in a situation to do? It was I was in the situation to invest because I had the capital to invest. I had an emergency fund put away. And so you guys need to be thinking about that, is how can I get my emergency fund first? How can I pay down my debt second? And then how can I get in the right mindset that says, I've got my cushion, I've paid down my debts, I'm good to go, now it is time to actually invest. And so the fifth is that we're, we're, we're in a situation now where interest rates are more than likely going to drop. And so my fifth bonus tip here is that if you guys are thinking about putting your money away capital-wise, cash-wise for savings, for an upcoming event, for emergencies, everything we've talked about, rates are already dropping in terms of mortgages because of a sort of anticipation of the Fed funds rate to drop. 
And in saying that, treasuries are already dropping, money market funds are already dropping, CDs are already dropping, your savings accounts are already dropping. I'm sure you guys have noticed that. And so my bonus tip for you guys today is your cash, try to secure it in a high interest environment. And you might say, well, Patrick, they've already dropped. It's no longer 5%, it's now 4%. 4% will be considered the high interest environment in the next 18 months as the Fed cuts by 25 and 50 basis points, especially if the economy does what I think it's going to do, which I, I think that's another day, another video. And um, the economy right now is, is in certain circumstances looking very good, but in many, we're starting to struggle and we're seeing especially the lower class starts to struggle with, with delinquency rates. So with that said, guys, this is a new type of video, sort of a, I, I, sitting in a car video. I, I guess I'm, I'm just sitting here talking with you guys and it's a new type of video. But what I can tell you is this, if you have money set aside, you get rid of your debts, you got a good mindset, and then you got capital to take advantage, you guys are gonna be so well equipped for whenever the next downturn is, whether that be in the next 12 months or whether that be in five years or 10 years. But the point is you have to have this and you have to have your ducks in a row. No pun intended as I literally just watched ducks walk in front of my car. But yeah, that's it guys, that's the video. If you guys didn't already see the video we talked about up here, we talked about this where we can actually have uh, buffer free, risk free sort of stocks, zero downside, all the upside, click that video to watch it. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see all of you guys on the next video. Goodbye.